We met to end the suffering of this nation and of the people. Our new alliance is a nationalist one and within the national framework. For someone who doesn't like Iran, Muqtada Sadr seems to like its allies quite a bit. Just weeks ago, the Shia leader was on the Iraqi campaign trail, doubting his independence from Tehran. Now in power, Sadr wants to form a government with the pro-Iranian Fatah alliance. So could Iraq be under the thumb of the Ayatollah, or is Sadr just being a good politician? Well, to discuss this, I'm joined by former U.S. Ambassador to Iraq, Afghanistan, and the United Nations, Almay Khalil Zad. Sir, pleasure having you on the Newsmakers. I'm curious to ask you about Muqtada Sadr. When you were U.S. Ambassador in, in office, he was one of your top enemies. He killed American soldiers. How do you feel about him in the ascendancy right now? Well, the past uh, was not a good one, uh, especially in the early years, uh, as you said correctly. Now, he has been on a journey and he has evolved. Uh, he has uh, sought improved relations with uh, some of the Gulf Arab states uh, and beyond uh, the Gulf. He said he wants to follow a policy of uh, nationalism independent of Iran. Uh, um, he wants uh, Iraq to be a regional bridge. He says he accepts the Constitution. He wants uh, a, a government that can address the needs of the people, uh, deal with corruption. If he actually behaves uh, as a part of the coalition, and it will take a long time probably for the government to be formed, then this would be progress. Uh, and and. Uh, it should be welcomed. Uh, mm -hmm. So we will have to wait and see uh, whether he delivers on the, on, on the new commitments and new messages that he is sending. Yeah, fascinating character. Nationalist, aligning with the communists and now pivoting towards those who like Iran more than he claims to like them. Fundamentally, do you have a fear that Iraq would just become some sort of vassal state of the Iranians? Well, that, you know, all Shiite political groups uh, have uh, had good relations with Iran. Uh, some of them lived, uh, the leaders, in Iran during the time of the opposition to Iraq, and the sectarian relations uh, are there. But I believe that they also mostly, not those who are on the pay of Iran, but most of the Shiite politicians would like to have good relations with the United States. They have told me that when I was ambassador, but then since as well. And they want uh, to, uh, to have good relations with other countries in the region because uh, uh, that is needed. A balanced policy is needed uh, for Iraq to succeed, for the communities of Iraq to right. come together. Uh, because if uh, uh, Iraq goes too far towards Iran, it would antagonize uh, others, Turkey, for example, or Saudi Arabia, and they can then in turn uh, work with groups inside uh, Iraq who are opposed to Iran, and that could lead to instability right. and even violence. So uh, a balanced approach is what Iraq needs, and uh, uh, Muqtada al-Sadr is speaking that language He's talking the talk. We'll see whether he does the walk. Uh, should he be part of the government, which it looks likely, and right. the government is formed. Uh, Abadi defeated Daesh, one of the most egregious groups in modern history, yet he still suffered at the polls, which I guess is a scathing indictment of the man's leadership. Where do you think Abadi got it wrong? Well, uh, you know, sometimes uh, war presidents or leaders uh, tend to do badly afterwards in the polls. Uh, the U.S. experienced that after the Gulf War with President Bush, uh, who was uh, very high in popularity uh, during the war and immediately after uh, lost the election to President Clinton. And some, of course, uh, refer to Churchill also, who did uh, uh, badly in the polls after World War II, uh, it, it is possible that, uh, that uh, since he was so focused on the war uh, and building regional relations and uh, repairing relations with the coalition, the U.S., 
that he perhaps, at least in the perceptions of some of the people in Iraq, didn't pay attention to the uh, right. domestic issues, uh, services, uh, corruption. Uh, I know that those were part of his agenda, but the, uh, but the, uh, uh, the, perhaps in the eyes of the of the people, he did not adequately pay attention to to those concerns. And uh, uh, but he did, uh, you know, he's one of the top three. Uh, he, he, he may well uh, be part of the government. Uh, you know, he could even right. survive as a potential compromise candidate for prime minister, although. Many people say that's unlikely, uh, but uh, we will have to wait and see. He didn't do as well as he expected. Right. That is certainly true. Yeah, so as we look at it and we look at the candidates and we look at the ascendancy of someone like Sadr and we look at the, the, the many challenges facing Iraq and the mess that it's in in many ways, you have a few more white hairs than the time when you were in office or even at the time of the U.S.-led invasion in 2003. Let's look at the big picture now, the big timeline. Fifteen years on, was it the wrong idea to go in and topple Saddam and invade and occupy Iraq? Well, I think uh, uh, that many people who uh, uh, made the decisions have said that if they knew and that Saddam didn't have weapons of mass destruction, at that time they wouldn't have done it. Uh, I uh, think with regard to Iraq and what has happened there, it is clear that uh, the coalition that went in, led by the United States, did make some mistakes that uh, uh, helped uh, in the development of the negative uh, events that occurred subsequently. I think the dissolving of the Iraqi army uh, was, a, was a mistake. Uh, the occupation establishment of an occupation authority was a mistake. Uh, I, I think that... Uh, uh, the Iraqi elite, uh, the political elite, also has to uh, take some of the blame for not coming together, for uh, uh, falling into the trap of sectarianism and being manipulated by uh, regional rivals. So there is a lot of blame uh, to go around for, for uh, the problems that Iraq has had since the uh, uh, invasion, although some say the roots of the problem go even further in, in the history of Iraq, how the borders of mm -hmm. Iraq were decided on by colonial powers. But uh, Iraq has made some progress. Uh, the indications are right now uh, uh, more positive. Daesh has been uh, defeated. Uh, um, uh, there, there was an election with all its problems and that they are looking at. Uh, and the challenge for the political leadership of Iraq is, uh, can they come to an agreement not only on a prime minister that can unite Iraqis, but also a, a platform, an agenda that can bring the Iraqis together, whether they are uh, Shiite Arabs right. or Sunni Arabs or Kurds. Uh, so th that is a challenge. If they don't uh, do that, uh, if, if they go back to a sectarian approach or an ethnic approach, uh, approach uh, that doesn't uh, that uh, does not unite the Iraqis, then uh, you know, unfortunately, the future uh, would be problematic. They also need to address the domestic issues, internal issues of corruption, of services to the people, uh, and uh, and Iraq has the potential uh, to be a very uh, well-to-do, promising country. Right. Uh, but uh, you know, they need to get their political act together. Okay, Mr. Ambassador. Salma Khalilzad, a pleasure having you on the Newsmakers. It's been good to talk to you.